originally was going to do um, like my top 10 favorite albums, but I realized that I couldn't really rank them because I was, I was having a hard time ranking them really, so we're just going to talk about them and just uh, in no particular I did manage to narrow down the exact top 10, but not in an order that I think is like, top, if that makes sense. It's top 10, if that makes sense. Just, I know that they're my top 10, but I don't know what order they're in really, so. Yeah. And then I might talk about some of the other albums on this list as well, because as you can see, I've listened to 30 albums this year. I can just start by going through the albums and like what all the albums are in case you guys don't know. Uh, the first one that's up left here is uh, 31520 by Childish Gambino. Um, it's literally just a pure white thing. That was the old, it was a really weird theme for the album. Um, I think I'll talk about each album individually after I mention them. Uh, this is Calm by Five Seconds of Summer. Uh, this is... It's by Charlie XCX, but I forgot what the album's name was. <laughs> it was her quarantine album. Um, I forgot what the name of it was. It'll come to me. Uh, this is Bright Eyes, Red Lights, I think is the name of the EP by Ruel. The next one is Chromatica by Lady Gaga. And then we have Dedicated Side B by Carly Rae Jepsen. And then the second, um, second row, the first on the second row, uh, the super popular Fiona album, their Fiona album, Fiona Apple, Fetch the Bolt Cutters album. Um, I'm not sure if you guys, I don't think you guys can see my mouse, so I'm just, that's why I'm pointing out the rows and stuff. The next one is uh, Half Written Story, I think is the title of that. Um, it's an EP from Haley Steinfeld. And then we have Manic by Halsey. Uh, I Disagree by Poppy. Pixel Path by Gene Dawson. Uh, High Road by Kesha. And then third row we have... Um, can't remember the name of the album. <laughs> by Love, Love's latest album. And we have Nectar by Joji, uh, Positions by Ariana Grande, Sawayama by Rina Sawayama, uh, Rare by Selena Gomez, Wonder by Shawn Mendes, and then starting off the fourth row we have Folklore by Taylor Swift, then we have Evermore by Taylor Swift, both very pleasant surprises of this year. Uh, notes on a conditional form, I think. I can't, I, I can't remember if that's their latest album or not, but it's by, it's by the 1975. That might be an older album. Um, but yeah, the latest album by the 1975. Uh, After Hours by The Weeknd. Uh, I can't quite remember the name of this EP by Troy Sivan, uh, his latest project. Uh, Starting Over by Chris Stapleton. Plastic Arts by Miley Cyrus, uh, Punisher by Phoebe Bridgers, Future Nostalgia by Dua Lipa, uh, Kid Crow by Conan Gray, Smile by Katy Perry, and then the last one, Ungodly Hour by Chloe and Allie. And yeah, those are all 30 albums that I've listened to this year. Now I guess I'll get through my like I said, I narrowed down my top 10, so uh, what I have here is a little, boop. I edited in a little uh, image for that, and yeah, those are my top 10 right there. I would say uh, my number one and my number two, I definitely have narrowed down. Uh, we'll get to those. I think I'll kind of just start from near the top of the list and move my way so I would say near the 
the top of the list for sure is uh, Starting Over by Chris Stapleton. Um, super awesome country album. Uh, I'd listened to Traveler uh, before, but that was pretty much the only uh, Chris Stapleton album I've listened to. Uh, I'm not much of a country guy. I don't really listen to country that much. I like it. I just don't really like listen to it very much. Um, but I love The Traveler. So, and my roommate had told me that Starting Over was very good. And I listened to it, and yeah, it was super, super good. Um, I have my little spot. All right, welcome back. A little technical difficulty, but like I was saying, we have um, a little Spotify here. If I can move it up just a bit. I'm trying to get it so the black bar isn't there, because I'm super OCD. Spotify pulled up here so I can go over the songs kind of um, definitely starting over the title track is probably a top 10 song of the year for me honestly uh, super fantastic like kind of uppity like but also slow at the same time like campfire kind of song it's just really nice and really pleasant to listen to um, even if you don't like country I think you would really like that song that would definitely be an exception for a lot of people, I think. So, uh, other ones. This one was really good. I've always made me think twice. Cold was super nice. Um, Maggie's song was really sweet. It was about his dog. Um, and then probably my second favorite off the album is Watch You Burn. Uh, super awesome, like intense uh, song. Um, I think this is the one that also has like a gospel like choir at the very end of the song too. And I'm a huge sucker for those kind of songs. So. That's either, if it's not number 10, it's number 9, 8, somewhere around there. So, like I said, I'm kind of just going to be working uh, from 10 to 1. So. Uh, so we got that out of the way. But what I consider to be 9. Probably. I think we'll probably go. You guys can also get some keyboard sounds from this video. Uh, Evermore by Taylor Swift. Um, this album was essentially everything that I wanted Folklore to be, and Folklore wasn't. <laughs> so I very, very much enjoyed this album. Folklore was a little too slow for me. Uh, pretty much every song was fairly slow, um, not real. And I get that's the point of the album. Like, not every album is going to be, like, has a lot of upbeat kind of tunes. But albums that are just pure, slow, like, kind of indie folk ballads are just kind of not my thing. So Evermore has a little bit more upbeat tone to it. Um, especially songs, No Body, No Crime. This is one of the more popular songs from the album. Fantastic, like, country, like, ballad. It's super, super awesome. Uh, Willow is a really good opening to the album. Uh, Evermore is an awesome closer. Just really, like I said, everything I wanted Folklore to be. Um, like an indie kind of folk album that wasn't just super slow and like boring, really. Um, so, yeah. And I really like the album art. It's really simple, but really nice. Probably won't talk too much about Evermore. Sorry for the Swifty fans out there. Um, number eight, 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 would probably, so this would probably be, like I said, with either number 10, 8, 9, depending on the day you ask me, but next song is, or next album is probably, it's probably going to be Plastic Arts. Um, I listened to this recently, actually, it came out a while ago, but I just now, got to listen to it um i had heard really good things about it and yeah uh, miley definitely delivered with this album um she is totally made for like 80s rock pop like songs like it's just this album is pretty fantastic uh the whole album is just super 80s super um i went in expecting like a lot more hard rock but it's really not it's like kind of more poppy depending on the song really a lot more just regular rock and roll and it really hit 
Um, I would say High is probably my favorite. Either High or Prisoner is really nice with Dua Lipa, because I like Dua Lipa a lot. And then she has a lot of covers from iconic 80s songs um, as well. And then the first two songs, really good opening to the album. And of course the album art is fantastic. Album art is, it's not like super important for me for an album, but I think it really sets the tone for an album, so that's why I kind of really like like when an album has a really nice album art. Um, so yeah, super awesome album. I would definitely recommend it. Um, I know a lot of people are turned off just by the fact that it's Miley Cyrus, but I would suggest please don't be turned away because it's Miley Cyrus. It's uh, actually a fantastic album. I would definitely recommend a listen if you like rock or just 80s kind of style music, for sure. Um, next, we'll probably go... I guess sticking with the 80s theme, this is probably my next one, is Future Nostalgia by Dua Lipa. Um, this album is like everything I want out of like a pop album. <laughs> Super upbeat. dance pop kind of uh, some of my favorites are probably Future Nostalgia's super fantastic opener, uh, really really great sets the tone for the album quite a bit uh, I know Dar Don't Start Now is um, the like big hit single from it but it's actually one of my least favorites from the album probably um, probably because it's so overplayed at this point like I've heard it on the radio so much that I'm just kind of tired of it so uh, levitating is really nice. Physical is really good. Uh, Boys Will Be Boys, I think, is a really underrated song. I don't see too many people talking about this song. And then, yeah, Break My Heart, I know, is the, the other single. What does this have? Like, yeah, 500 million plays. So, yeah, super awesome retro 80s. I know a lot of artists this year have been going back to, like, a super 80s kind of theme. Um, an 80s revival, so to speak, but. I really enjoy that, so that's why she is in my top ten. Let's see what would be next. So we've knocked out what four so far? Yeah. I think next would probably be Wonder by Sean Mendes. This album uh, really surprised me. He released the single Wonder, um, like the, the title track, uh, and I really loved it. Like, one of my songs of the year. Like, really, really good song. Um, but for me, Sean Mendes has a history of, I really like his singles, but the rest of his, the songs on his albums, I end up not caring for at all. So his album as, as a whole, I just don't like. Like, I don't really like any of his albums. I mainly just like his singles. Like, um... Nothing, is it nothing, it's not nothing about you, it's one of his other singles on his previous album that I really like, but the album itself I don't care for that much, um, and I was worried that this album was going to be the same, but it ended up being drastically different from his previous projects, and I really enjoyed that, like the songs actually had like distinct, um, like sounds, and the production was really nice on them, like they it really departed from his has just like generic pop sound and actually had really different noise in it which I really enjoyed um, and I pretty much enjoy every single song on this album um, I would one thing I'll say is I think can't imagine is useless and pointless I think look up at the stars is a fantastic closer um, and this song should have just been not or here I, you can't even see my mouse this song should have been not on this album it's not a, this is like the only song I don't really care for um, other than that I think it's a great album uh, really good departure from his previous stuff and hopefully he continues in a more like creative direction because um, it's pretty good uh, yeah so I guess that leaves Manic Nectar After Hours and 
this album came out in 2020. Like, that's how long this year, or I guess last year has been since this is a day late. Um, I love this album. It's pretty fantastic. The first time I listened to it, um, I didn't, like, I liked it, but I didn't, like, love it. But then I re-listened to it, like, three times, and it grew on me a lot. Um, you Should Be Sad is one of my favorite songs of last year so good like super like uppy like country pop ballad which you would think would not fit Halsey like at all but it totally does like it it is a fantastic song my favorite song off the album easily um and then one of the weirdest parts about the album is probably how Without Me and Graveyard are both on this album even though they came out like two years prior so they don't really fit but they're still both really good songs, so, I mean, they work. <laughs> um, Ashley and Clementine are both really nice songs. Uh, I actually really like all the interludes, despite how much there are. Um, especially Shuga's interlude, <laughs> I think is a really nice song. A uh, little mini interlude, I guess. 3 a.m. is really nice. Uh, I Hate Everybody is an interesting song. <laughs> but yeah, it's a really nice kind of... I don't want to say experimental because it's I mean it's kind of experimental but yeah if you like pop you'll definitely like this album for sure so. and it also has fantastic album art so that really helps a lot um, but yeah let's see next I know for sure um, is Nectar this album I think probably start off with my least favorite part of the album is probably how long it is I think it's a little bit too long I don't know, 18 songs is a little too much for me um, especially because a lot of them are just kind of I wouldn't say a lot like a fair amount of them are just kind of eh. um, I would say which there's one in particular that I really do not care for but I can't remember which one that is What this album has, that's probably my favorite part, is the hits. Um, Sanctuary, Run, Give Me Love, all of his singles that came out before the album are fantastic. Like, super incredible songs. Um, and even, like, there's a few, there's probably three songs off this album. Pretty Boy, uh, Mr. Hollywood, and Ear Man. Um, I love those songs. Fantastic. Um, this is a super great R&B record I would really recommend it to anybody who likes kind of um, I keep hitting my table I'm sorry uh, like falsetto -y kind of super just like laid back and just chill to like sleepy R&B uh, this is perfect for you this album is like the album for you so yeah definitely probably my number three um, it might change in a few days but and then, again, with the album art, great album art, so. Uh, number two, this is probably the album that I have the most to say about, and that is Pixel Bath by Gene Dawson. Um, I had not heard of this guy. He's a super, uh, I don't want to say obscure. He's not that obscure, but really not that popular um, artist um, that my roommate introduced me to. This album, I would say, has the most different genres out of any album I've ever listened to, ever. <laughs> if I had to choose one, would, it's it's a hip-hop album, but it's also has, like, 2000s, like, pop-punk and, like, heavy core, like, or, like, horror core rap mixed in some of the songs. And also, like, indie, like, white girl pop, like, mixed into it. Like, there's so many different genres in this album. It is ridiculous. Definitely the most experimental, um, like, weirdest album I've listened to this year. And that is a good thing, because it is so fantastic. Like, it's, every single song on here is a hit for me. Like, I, there's not a single song I don't like. I would say Devilish is probably my favorite. Um, Starface is pretty good. And then I know Clear Bones and Power Freaks are two of the other like pretty popular ones off the album. Um, 
Nature's Boy is another one. I like that one a lot. And then, yeah, like I said, Devilish is probably my favorite. If I would recommend any song from this, it would be Devilish probably, or Power Freaks, I would say. Uh, but yeah, super unique record. I would definitely give this a listen just f just for curiosity's sake. Um, yeah, it's incredible. Um, and then the album art is super awesome. So. Album art is always a bonus for me. And then, drum roll <laughs> to the number one is After Hours. Um, when I first listened to this, I did not think it would change from my number one, and it ended up yeah, not changing. Um, this album has become like top ten of all time for me, probably. It's so good. <laughs> um, I've always loved The Weeknd, and I was super excited for this album, like, because all of his singles leading up to it were great. Like, Blinding Lights, obviously, was, like, the song of the year, basically. Uh, I've listened to this song, like, hundreds of times at this point, and it has still not gotten tired for me. Like, it's still so catchy and so upbeat. It's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, Heartless is still a super fantastic song. And then probably my favorite song off the album is After Hours itself. I did not like this song when it came out, but it really grew on me, and it's now my favorite song on this album. It's so good. It starts off slow, but really picks up, and he just gets into it. Um, and in my opinion, I think this is The weekend at his best. Like, this is his best thing he's made ever. It's just such a fantastic, like, complete album. Like, it, it's like complete is like a perfect word I would use for this album. It's so complete. Like listening to it from start to finish, it just is an experience. <laughs> like it truly is. Um, I would say my favorites off the album for sure are After Hours, like I said. Um, Scared to Live, I think is a really underrated song that I don't hear too many people talking about. Uh, it's so good, super catchy chorus, super catchy, catchy hook. Um, Artist Love is really great. Um, obviously, the other singles, In Your Eyes and Savory Tears, are pretty fantastic. And then, kind of, the deeper cuts as well are super, like, dark and gritty. And, like, they, if there's any album that fits, like, the music fits what the tone of the album is trying to go for. Like, super dark, gritty, like, Las Vegas kind of uh, casino kind of horror stuff. Like, this album fits it perfectly, like, to a T. Um, I would say the one song I don't like really is Escape from LA. I think Escape from LA is too long. It's like six minutes and it it's pretty slow and it kind of just goes on forever. So that's one song I would probably take out. But other than that, every song is fantastic. Uh, this album is just fantastic. <laughs> like my number one of the year easily. And it's no contest. Um, Pixel Path came close, but not, not, not close enough. <laughs> unfortunately but uh yeah that's basically my top 10 uh, of the year i guess i could go over um a few other albums as well uh noteworthy ones let's see here i would say my least favorite of the year is this love um album that's next to nectar here since i don't have my mouse i'm sorry <laughs> uh super generic super boring pop basically not a very good album. Too long, too. I'm pretty sure it's like 18 songs long or something. Like, it's really long. Yeah, 21 <laughs> songs. Like, that's that's a no from me. That's too much. Um, yeah, that's easily my least favorite of the year, for sure. Uh, Chromatica, I really liked. That's probably my top 13, top 14 um, in there, for sure. Chromatic is really nice, like dance pop, kind of similar to Future Nostalgia, a little bit. Um, uh, Punisher by Phoebe Bridgers is super fantastic, like indie, like lo-fi kind of pop. Uh, also, like uh, some folk elements in there. Uh, super dark, totally fits the album. Really awesome album. Positions from Ariana Grande was kind of a disappointment. Um, it was good, but it wasn't like 
great. It was just kind of eh, for me. Uh, Positions, the single I really like, um, but the rest are kind of eh. Other than that, the rest are kind of just good, but not like, like, oh my god, insane. <laughs> like, I liked them, but yeah, that pretty much wraps it up. So, I hope you all enjoyed this. Hopefully, my next video is going to be a roleplay. Um, I have a few ideas in mind. Um, the one that Riley gave me. I still have, thinking so Riley, if you're watching this, I, uh, I still have that in mind, I promise. <laughs> so yeah, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all have a super safe start to the year, and I will see you.